Hello, I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're doing wonderful. I hope you're this kind. Oh my god, please like if you like, please share, please subscribe if you want this material to continue. Oh, Marona Mia Sacramento Santa Lucia. Oh my god, have mercy. Oh, suffering, fuckatash. Whatever. Oh my god, what happened in the market? Oh my god. I'm really active trader, so, uh, uh, Anybody that stays and look at the market, try to feel the movements. So in the morning, I felt the speculators' movement in gold. Uh, as you may, some of you know, uh, I bought dust at the close. I was about 1% up. I sold it. I was really lucky. With 1.5% to 2% loss, I bought GDX right away, and I, I'm up for the day, believe it or not. And I'm suspecting, I didn't sell, I'm suspecting I'm gonna sell with a loss tomorrow. God have mercy, uh, maybe I should have sold. But I'm in with the fear, I don't like the fear, I don't care about the fear. I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna fear, man, I'm not gonna fear nothing. So I stayed, I'm up for the market, up for the week, up for the day, sorry, up for the week. Uh, and I chose to stay because the chart told me to stay. <laughs> I'm gonna sell with a loss tomorrow. I feel it. I really do. I'm sorry, but uh, that's the truth. But uh, yeah, I'm up for for the day. I'm up for the week so far because of the fast move. I've seen the movement of gold. It caught my attention. And once the market started, and I seen three million shares got bought in the I think in the first ten minutes, five minutes. In the market in GDX, this is above uh, average volume. I seen the GLD volume, the SLV volume at the first five minutes. I sold my dust, boom, right away at I think nine seventy five. I think I bought it like one and a half percent more. So nine seventy five, I sold it with a big smile on my face, and I bought GDX and I bought it. I caught it really early, and I made really good money. Uh, and that's that. Let's talk about the market. So this is UUP, the ETF for the uh, for the dollar bull, in the bullish disco signal is uh, the bullish disco combo is on, but you have a dark cloud cover in the the ETF, which means you open above yesterday's um, yesterday close and you close. Uh, more than halfway into the previous day's body so it's usually a reversal candle so nobody knows what's going to happen in UUP all I know I bought GDX and if the UUP go up I get screwed another thing that made me buy U uh, GDX the movement in USDGPY I, I noticed that movement I know uh, let, let me finish with the UUP so UUP uh, indicators are bullish but uh, this is a uh, and uh, a dark uh, cloud cover. Let me look at the volume. Then I will go to USD DPY and talk about it. Definitely above volume. See, that's why I'm more comfortable today than yesterday. If you remember, uh, I was really super bearish on GDX, but I said the volume is anemic, and I was really wondering. I'm, I'm I was really frustrated because because it didn't give me a peace of mind. Yesterday was 16 million. It's below average. And it's supposed to be a reversal of bull trap day. Oh, Maroon, I did not understand that. But now I have the volume on my side and I feel comfortable. So definitely a dark cloud cover when it comes to uh, the Japanese candles, which is a reversal uh, candle that needs confirmation yet. You have above average volume. Look at seven, oh, let's say eight million right here, okay? Seven nine, say eight million. The previous day was three and a half million. So double, double, double any day, any day. Sometimes it's seven times. My own. Some days I'm some some days at seven times. So that and some some two and a half. So previous day, it's double the volume with a reversal candle. So 
that makes me I noticed one things one thing a lot of people look at is volume you could look at the volume here a tie it's not good the volume here it was bought so you assume more buying is going to come and that's what happened the volume here is, is, is a positive volume 15 million shares capish and that's 14 million so people start distributing more even this day in 9th of Jan we had a gap in the UUP see and you had a, a bearish engulfing I don't know if it's a bearish I think it's one one black crawl with what with 9 million and what happened this is what happened so it's not the end of uh, the dollar but more likely than not it's going to go down okay so that's the UUP the ATF for dollar bull let me look at the USD GPY and why I right away I changed my position first of all you see look you have you have a high here in 8th of March with this indecisive candle then you have an evening star okay so the high was 137.91 the high here is 137.77 so it's a lower high for sure so you, it, it's a failure but usually it doesn't it doesn't collapse in one day but it could like what happened here so you have a resistance a failure at resistance also you fail to go over 70. if you remember me what i always say a failure at 70 is not always good okay and this is the reading right here let's see okay no negative divergence you have negative divergence in the MACD and also failure at 70 for the USDG. Why? I, I always I looked at this resistance. I said to myself, okay, it could go both ways, but believe it or not, the probability probabilities were higher that we will break this, but we didn't. And we reversed. And I respect that. So when I when I bought gold, I think it was minus 40 basis points. So that's huge in the forest markets. I made up my decision quick, quick. And I always have it back in my mind, TLT's bullishness. And if you follow me on Twitter, I always talk about this setup. I think, I feel it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna talk about it after the VIX. So this is the VIX, oh my own. The VIX, the buy signal is really hard to eventuate. Golly, although it is on, when it comes to disco signal uh, combo but this is not a reversal candle because it's at the bottom even if it uh, say today closed at uh, 1778 even if it closes at 16 50 uh, wait it closed at 1608 this this will be an inverted hammer okay so it's not bearish at all but it's frustrating it definitely is it definitely is frustrating uh, to for the VIX is not really helping lately at all see see I don't know what's going on you could use this right here looks like We, we, we broke out here and we tested this it's very possible but I'm gonna show you even the bull in Japan that's one things I put it in the back of my mind I think I talked about it in yesterday's video but uh, the bullish disco combo is definitely always always important 
and also the uh, bullish divergence definitely is is something to talk about too so you have a bullish skull combo with a bullish divergence okay you have divergence the histogram make the histogram with uh, stochastic and with our side you should it would have been really nicer if it closed over 50 for the RSI, but it didn't. But still, is bullish action. But I don't trust the VIX as of yet because it's been giving me false signals, but maybe this one is important. So uh, I'm assuming now the risk off, the classic risk off is back, which means. Uh, people will run for bonds and gold and silver and also gold mines like they used to uh, in the past so risk off in the past usually it's either going to the dollar rarely and or going for uh, the flight safety for bonds and today they did the flight safety to bonds and usually this is good that means no liquidation mode people uh, risk appetite are high so they switch from riskier asset to less riskier asset uh, via bonds and gold and silver so it's really good for the market which means the market as of now as of this second is not collapsing at most it is a correction collapsing when you go through a, uh, a liquidation mode where you go for the dollar as a safety as a safe haven but now it's not going on like that another thing TLT uh, it's definitely definitely in the back of my mind for at least since March when I saw this uh, even if the last few videos when I, every time I'm bullish on gold I talk about this but what happened yesterday golly see us technicians we get fooled too we usually get fooled at, congest uh, at congestions or uh, uh, at, at, at direct, direct list market when you have no direction and you try to find the trend. So before uh, get, uh, getting the trend, usually we get fooled and hopefully some of us will have the disciplines to ride the new trend. And they usually say before a breakout, you should have a shakeout. So a shakeout before a breakout so for me as a technician and I claim that uh, I am disciplined you have a breakdown in the trend line and also uh, you have uh, you have a very bad bearish candle okay so when I get bearish on TLT and gold yesterday. I really based it on that. I did not base it on my bias views. I'm happy that I, I change my views all the time and I don't impose my views in the market for I'm trying to make money. I'm not trying to be right, okay? So I'm gonna talk about this now, but because I remember one thing in uh, in uh, VIX, I'm gonna show you. Maybe I talked about it yesterday. I suspect that I did, but let me just do it now. Yesterday we had this bullish. All right, see that's what happened. Yesterday we hit the lower end of the Bollinger Band, and I said. Uh, based on John Bollinger's findings when he did this uh, used the standard deviation of the 20-day moving average he, he said the price action stays within it 95% of the time and usually when you have a reversal candle that uh, got rejected by the lower end of the Bollinger Band at least you go to the 20-day moving average but you got so panicky and you went all the way to the upper end of the Bollinger Band, okay? So maybe that's why it sold off at the upper end of the Bollinger Band. But it's something to think about, okay? 
So if you don't understand technical analysis, you're going to feel that I am wishy-washy and I change my views. But if you understand it, you know I get fooled like the rest of you, especially if the market is trendless. So we try to find the place, you know, the new direction. And usually, as I said uh, earlier, before I went back to the VIX, you have a shakeout before a breakout. Okay? So... When you have a shakeout like that, when you gap down, okay, gap down, you open below the 20 day moving average and you close not only below the 50 and the 200 day moving average, you close below the trend line. That's why I got bearish. But today, you opened above the trend line and you closed at the high above the 220 day moving average. So if yesterday, if tomorrow it's gonna go down, you know that I am not talking gibberish. This is technical analysis and we try to understand what's going on. And this is a trading range. So we look for trends. Now we are in trading range in a triangle, okay? And you have a congestion and a convergence of every moving average. 10, 20, 50, 200, okay? So we have everyone, capiche? And today we have gap up and you close above yesterday's high too, right? Yeah, three, yeah, three. So it's definitely bullish. And if it's the repeat itself, it is a breakout already because shakeout before a breakout. Let's look at the volume though, okay? Let's look at the volume, why not? Oh God, if you don't understand the technical analysis and you see my videos, you, see, you will think I'm full of crap. But okay, the volume is okay, but it's below yesterday's volume, but it's not anemic, it's good. And if you notice, since the start of this trading range, there is definitely more uh, more accumulation than distribution for sure. Let me look at the golden cross, which means uh, the 50 day moving average above the 200 day moving average, if it happens already. Let me look at it again without this beautiful triangle. Look at only. Huh. We almost have uh, a bullish combo, but not yet. Let me look at the golden cross, because it's really important. If it happens, it will be the first one since the death cross. You can do it here. No, it's not in yet, but it's very close. So maybe I think tomorrow will. I think tomorrow will. Uh, tomorrow, even if we go in, uh, unchanged, uh, the golden cross is gonna happen tomorrow. It's extremely, extremely close. Extremely close, say. It will be the first golden cross since the fiasco in Feb. 12 uh, 2020 it's definitely it definitely means something definitely means something so that's one thing uh, made me worry when i shorted gold via dust thank god i i sold with a modest loss and i got uh, i jumped in gdx it's, it's it's yeah you really have to make a decision really fast really fast it's sad but it's true good deal so i'll talk about tlt G GLD, breakout, definitely a clean breakout where you, the most important trading uh, time is the US time. So I like GLD more than the futures, the gold futures or the spot prices, because GLD will give me the most important trade, which is the US time. Okay, you have one white soldier that not only break out of this triangle, but also it is the highest close on 52 since since that day. Believe that? 
this is this opened open low and closed lower so this is the highest close since this reversal day but it's not higher than these days so I would say okay one two three four one It's the, high, the second highest, third highest close of the year. How about that? Okay, so you see, break out. So shake out before I break out. I don't know why they do that, but they do. With the high, extremely high volume, so I like that too. Okay, so. Usually when you miss uh, the 20 and you go you missed the 20 in the stochastic and also the 50 like that with this high that's a sign of accumulation and a, a, a total reversal but you need the bullish MACD which will take sometimes it will be a it, the fireworks will start because it is a bullish uh, mode above the zero line see what happened here Barum. so it's hot it's faster Yesterday, what happened? Yesterday, we had a, a bull trap day. It could have been a bull trap with everything going down. So I really had, as as a trader, I I, I really I couldn't. I don't know. I don't. You know. I, I I got me some slacks. Everybody got fooled. Look at the spy right here. Where are we? Oh my God, have mercy. From the 16th, this is the one of the best ETFs in the world. It mimics the S&P 500, okay? So since December 16th, till the breakout in Jan 6th, we went through hell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ah, oh, we broke out in the 15th. If you don't believe in technical analysis, this is an easy target. You'll say, oh, one day they're bullish, the second day they're bad. They are full of it, man. They don't know what they're talking about. Even that, la, 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 la. you know, because you're lazy and you don't want to understand behavioral finance. We have some days when it's trendless. It fools us all, all. Yet, a very disciplined technician would have bought this breakout. Bullish disco combo. Can you see that? See that? So you have the RSI or 50 stochastic over 20. And also it, it was simultaneous. Let's look at even the even the volume, man. So Mr. Market fools us all, man. But it doesn't mean we're full of crap crap. Okay. It's it's above average volume. It's the highest 16th, the highest of the year. Of that of the year of that time, even though it's 60 trading days. So it's definitely, uh, yeah. So uh, this was easy to see too. Negative divergence, uh, bearish, uh, MACD. Oh, let me talk about the spy anyway. So why not? Why not? Okay. So this is uh, supposedly an evening star. You have white candle, a uh, smaller body higher tick like that like a shooting star and a red candle that eclipsed you have at least half or three quarters of the pre the third day but you eclipsed the whole day so this is definitely a bona fide uh evening, evening star even though we have a rejection so what technical analysis is telling me this is a reversal day higher volume bearish macd kiss formation bearish stochastic also failure before 70 in the RSI and you can see so you can't blame us and say you were full of crap just because the market fools us definitely the discipline technician definitely uh, will outperform definitely every anybody and everybody so 
Don't blame us and think we are mambo jumbo type guys. So a negative divergence everywhere. Bear schmack thickes. Going down. Capish. Another thing here. We have a broadening top formation right here. Okay. This is a reversal pattern. The confirmation with this pattern would come when we break this low right here. Okay. So we can only do so much, man. And I promise you, we outperform the majority of traders. We outperform them. I promise. And we sell with a loss, and we don't get wiped out like many people, okay? So this is a SPY, it's a reversal. I just wanted to talk about this. Now I analyze the SPY. So let's talk about GDX. All right, this is the 195 minutes time frame, and you have it, bona fide, bullish disco combo that really, really works, and I'm gonna show you now, with a breakout. So a breakout, confirmation with the next 195 minutes last time this happened was right here in Feb 27th and this what happened bullish disco combo kiss go up yeah bearish divergence you went down you really corrected but you made us really wonder where we're going so that's the 195 minutes time frame. It's very bullish breakout with bullish disco combo. Another thing, if you remember my video yesterday, I was disappointed of the volume. I, see, yesterday I was short in GDX. Today I'm going long. Based on, definitely on uh, charting. It's not because of me. So today is extremely bullish. You have this well-supported area. You have three years uh, support at 33.06. Three years support. You had consolidation here. You had a bull trap. You closed inside. Yet, you corrected that. Okay? So that was definitely a bull trap with low volume. Low volume. Look at the volume right here. 13 to 13 million something i was wondering why it's anemic look at the volume today 34 million five hundred thousand you understand so the volume today is on our side it's higher than any volume since when my own god dang look since that day, the reversal day. See, that's when you need volume. When you reverse, you need volume. So this is a reversal right here, and you went down. Now, reversal with high volume, with a breakout, and you went up. You went up in GDX. Look at the volume right here, you can see. And also, if you look at the stochastic, it came out of uh, oversold usually when you come out of oversold like that what it means the people that sold she is that coming back like me coming back fast usually fast fast moves fast move especially like this fast move from 22 to in less than a week to 24 to almost 25 so she could do the math right here almost 14% in a couple of days. So this is serious money. If you remember me, I always say 4% is the magic number. We did not have 4% in any day here. I was really wondering if you really want to watch my videos in the past. I was waiting for the 4%. I did not receive it. I was waiting for that. I did not receive it. Bull trap day with anemic volumes. Like, oh my God, it's so anemic. I was upset. I want it to be a bull trap day cause I, I bought dust. But look, 13 million to 30, almost 35 million maroon. Okay, so this, this is GDXY, same thing. With 4%, this is the magic number. So, 
4% is always the magic number for gold miners. High volume with high price expansion mean continuation to the upside. That's why I, I, I kept my shares. I did not sell and I don't care about the FOMC. Please like if you like. Please share. Please subscribe. Please do remember. This goes forever!